Hello and welcome back to Blackwatch Intel. My name is Crashy and today we're going to be talking about the brand new Season 6 competitive ladder that's just started recently. So, competitive Season 6 is here and some of the changes that we've seen hit the PTR are now live. And I have to say, this is kind of just like the opener intro to my thoughts on Season 6 thus far. I have to say, it's kind of weird to me that they started Season 6 with D.Va and Mercy changes on the PTR, but I understand that they didn't want to pull those into live just yet because they don't feel like they're quite ready, I suppose. You know, they're still tweaking things, still changing things, and that makes sense. It just does feel a little weird to start the season when people were looking forward to these changes or just looking at these changes from the meta perspective and people were analyzing the meta and looking at what heroes they think would be strong and yet on the live servers we still have the kind of ridiculously strong defense matrix diva and then we have like the very annoying res um you know live mercy so for me personally the you know the roadhog changes the junkrat changes um, the Orisa changes, all those changes coming into the competitive season were definitely something I was looking forward to, but that was also pending, you know, that the Diva and Mercy changes came in as well. So I've made some videos uh, in the past, I think I'll throw this one up in the YouTube card, just talking about Roadhog versus Diva and kind of the interaction that I think is going to go on between them. And I do think that what I said in that video is still valid, but it's not valid yet because the Diva changes haven't hit the live server. So some of those things are kind of just pending until we see, you know, what those changes exactly are once they hit live and, and what they'll exactly be. But in terms of season six thus far, I've played 10 matches on two of my accounts now. So I got placed in, right over Diamond on my main account and I got placed right over Diamond on my Doomfist account. And I am mostly playing flankers and Doomfist on that account, I think. I don't really have a goal for that one just yet. I just know it's something I'm going to use for footage and, and uh, one of the accounts I like to play on with friends and such. But in any case, one thing that I'm really seeing about this season, and I think it's making it very fun, is there's a lot of diversity on the ladder right now like there's this kind of unknown feeling of you know what is the meta right now what is you know what what should we be playing you know should we be running a dive comp should we be you know running spam with junkrat orissa and i think the changes that we've seen has actually put overwatch in one of the best places that it's been in in a long time and the reason I say this is because it feels like there's so much that can actually work. It doesn't feel like dive comp is so effective that you have to run it and you have to do it properly and you have to get the max value out of those heroes and that's how you win. It doesn't feel like that. It feels like Reinhardt is actually back because he can also stand behind the Orisa. It feels like, you know, Reinhardt can work with a Roadhog or with a Zarya or with a D.Va even currently on live and so there's so much diversity with what tanks you can pick, which really kind of set up the comp. There's there's diversity in, you know, do we want to run the Junkrat, who's very, very strong right now. I definitely would say he's going to be seeing some high-level play and a lot of meta usage. Or do we try to counter him with Farah? You know, what do we what do we want to run? Well, you know, dive comp's still not bad, so maybe we run dive comp as well. So I think the best thing I can say about Season 6 so far, and this is just kind of like my, you know, my initial thoughts... To season six is that there's a lot of diversity and it makes the games feel very fun because it makes the kind of the rock paper scissors of balance of counter picking it makes that feel real where before it was like whoa don't pick you know this hero that's definitely not good or yo they have um you know winston let's pick reaper now and it actually makes sense it actually makes sense to kind of go in the circle of counter picking and so that's really fun to me that's really fun that we get to see some diversity on the ladder the problem that i'm having thus far is that whatever they said they were going to do with matchmaking and um you know trying to make the games more balanced i don't know if that actually was implemented i don't know if they said it was or wasn't i don't even really understand what they're exactly doing but all in all the games in terms of compositions and of players not of, of heroes it, it just still doesn't feel any different at all i feel like i'm getting a lot of the same issues that i got that made season five so frustrating and luckily we're not dealing with you know every single game being the dive comp but we are dealing with you know four and five dps players on a single team you know various um support mains that you know don't really feel like they have a role to play and i i actually won one of my placement games on my doomfist account 
with five DPS and Lucio. Like, um, that's not a joke that I actually won one of my games like that. And, and you know, I'm lucky to have won it, but it, it was just a ridiculous kind of experience and it wasn't very fun. So I don't think we've seen much matchmaking changes. I, I don't even, like I said, I don't even know what they're planning on doing. Um, but it's going to be interesting to see how that evolves with Overwatch because I think there's something to be desired in terms of matchmaking and creating a group of players that makes sense you know on the same team it, you know you can put a group of professional players all on the same team regardless of their role and they'll make it work and i think that's the ideology of the competitive ladder we should all be flexible enough to make it work but the reality is that the emulated pro scene the emulated competitive scene that is overwatch here on the competitive ladder is just not that it's not the pro scene you know we're not quite as flexible we like to play what we want to play and I said this on Twitter recently, I think one-tricking is, is going to become the biggest issue with Overwatch. Now, I kind of one-trick myself a bit. I try to stay flexible a bit, like when I'm, I'm playing more seriously, or I don't even know if that's the right words, because I always play seriously, but I don't always, you know, I'm not always as flexible as I should be, or as I'd like to be, or as I usually am even. But I do think that as time goes on, we're going to see that the one tricking issue in overwatch is going to become the main issue it's going to it's not going to be about balance when the game is mostly balanced i feel like right now there may be some tweaks here and there that need to be made obviously and that'll always be the case with with hero balance in games like this but i think the issue is going to be the you know non-compromising lack of teamwork that we're going to see moving forward and so it'll be interesting to see how blizzard responds to that I think the only true way to kill one tricking is to make it a bannable offense. But the problem, and I said, like I said, this is what I said on Twitter, is the problem with making one tricking a bannable offense is how do you do that properly? And and maybe it shouldn't be done because ultimately, you know, everybody paid the same amount of money, and I've said that in the past as well. Like I shouldn't be able to be dictated with what I play because I paid the same money that you paid. And everybody should be, you know, free to enjoy the game in their own right. So it's it's an interesting topic. It's it's kind of like a moral high ground on, you know, what is what's right, what's fair, and uh, and what Blizzard will ultimately decide to do. So overall, my thoughts on season six. It's very early, so you know, these are my really initial thoughts on season six. Is that the diversity is making the game feel much better to play. I think people are a little bit more open to different picks when you can freely pick a junk rat on your team and have him not be considered a troll or a thrower. And that's good because that's how we should feel about a lot of things. Now, unfortunately, I know Hanzo's Hanzo's taken the number one spot with that. I think even probably Bastion's more acceptable than Hanzo and Symmetra's more acceptable than Hanzo, but we'll have to see as the game evolves. I think Overwatch is the type of game that will will change as the community changes and it will grow as the developers and as the player base decides what is acceptable and what isn't acceptable and how the game should feel and how it should interact and overall we, we've never really had a game like this you know specifically and uh, it's been an interesting ride so far so that's my thoughts on season six thus far I think there's lots to come I think finding the true meta is gonna be interesting but I'm telling you right now Spam with Arisa Junkrat is scary. So thank you so much for checking out this video. Please do not leave without leaving a like and subscribe for future content. We're going to be pushing out videos. And I think it looks like me and Nebo are going to be doing an Overwatch podcast either once or twice a month. So stay tuned for more details on that. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you for the next video. Does the beat